What's going on, everybody? This is your girl, K. Rich, and I'm coming at you from a PK perspective. So, as some of y'all may have seen and see now, it's been some changes, right? Well, I'm going to have a transparent moment with everybody, and I normally do not share any of my personal stuff on. I just give you what God gives me, and I burn out. But because this was so in-depth, because it's so visual, and because I feel the, the compulsion of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to share so, I would say maybe September, I had um, received a prophetic word, and in that, I had already said some things that I was going to do or change, and then the prophetic word kind of confirmed it. But when the prophetic word came, I was like, hmm, is he talking about, it, or is, is God in some ways insinuating my hair? And I was like, well, I was going to do, and I was going to do some other things. I was going to combine some locks and then I was going to cut it because they were so long that I, I didn't want to get to the point where I would sit on them. And I was ripped when I say there, there, of sitting on them. So I was like, all right. And I, I kind of blew it off. I'll do it in time. Um, I, I, it, it just was a quick thought. It wasn't, it, to my knowledge, it wasn't the Holy Spirit saying, oh, so go on, go on about my, my life. And I'm in the gym and what's crazy, I had had a conversation about um, this, this uh, guy that I know who's a prophet. He's an awesome man of God, all the things he don't miss. Like, I don't fool with people that, that aren't accurate, right? He don't miss. And I was saying, you know, I, I wonder where he's at. I wonder what he's doing. And I had a conversation with my best friend actually about him the day prior to me seeing him. I hadn't seen him in two years. So I'm at the gym. I wind up going to the gym at an off time. I'm, I'm later than my norm. And I see him and he comes in and he's like, hey, and hug him. We talk. And he was like, you know, I usually am not in the gym at this time because I my schedule, whatever. But I'm just in here at this awkward time. So as we converse and we are just talking about things of, of the Lord, he begins to prophesy to me. And and I could tell it's like when he's talking, like I'm like, he's trying to say something else. But. I just, you know, let him do his thing and I'm receiving. And then he goes, you're not going to like this. And I'm like, whatever the Lord, you know, hmm, whatever the Lord has. <laughs> and he was like, God is saying to untwist your hair, untwist it. There are things that are twisted that he's trying to untwist some things. And I, y'all, when he said it, it resonated so heavy in my spirit and I and it took me back to the memory of when I heard Holy Spirit kind of like mm, is, it, is it my hair but I was thinking a trim a change up and he was like no he's saying like it's that time right now it's up man y'all when I tell y'all I cried in the gym <laughs> I I am not a extra person right i love my locks they were easy they were you know they were healthy i just they were me it was i loved my hair saints saints and ain'ts i love my hair those who were in it those who are out i love my locks do you hear me and i just couldn't like the whole rest of the workout i would just randomly cry and he was like pray on it i'm not saying you know you know, that hellfire and brimstone is going to happen if you don't. But this is what I heard the Lord say. And when he said, I said, man, as soon as you said it, I, I knew. I knew. I know that that's that's God. And then it echoed, echoed. And I prayed about it. And even when he was like, pray about it, I was like, there's nothing to pray about except for strength. Because I, I, I know, I know this is God. Because now it makes sense as to why I heard what I heard, when I heard what I heard. So, saints, it took me <laughs> about a week. To digest it and randomly I would just cry. Randomly I would just cry. Because once again, y'all, I love my locks. Is this on? I love my locks. Like, and I I'm like, I don't even understand why. What is this? You know, but I am a firm believer that if God said it, do it. There obedience does not require understanding. Obedience does not require an explanation, right? If God is saying it, I'm, I'm going to do it. Because the one thing I don't want to be ever again in life is outside of the will of God. So I start to go through the process of taking my hair out, taking my hair out. And then I had, which is crazy, maybe like a weekend. Now, y'all know my locks was like down to my butt. So I cut it a little and I'm like, because I don't know how long I'm going to let it be. And I, what's crazy is 
during that those months between September and January, I was sending my best friend whose hair is already short. I was like, friend, you know, I think that this haircut would look so good on you and this style. And have you thought about because I think she had um, permed her hair or something. But she had I was like, you ever thought about just being natural and a low cut? So I'm sending her these cuts and <laughs> she was like, no, but I mean, I'm sending them over and over. So when I finally get to like taking it down, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. And the Holy Spirit was like, that cut you've been sending her, <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> and I'm like, I I if you don't think God has a sense of humor, you're, you're smoking dope. You're smoking dope. <laughs> so even in the midst of taking it down, like I have things to do. Like I coach, I I'm an assistant coach in high school, girls basketball. I do, I work in ministry. I've had assignments that I've had to go on. And like, so I'm, I'm, I'm covering the, the, like this whole part is out and I'm covering it up with this or that. And it was crazy. And I'm going to show some of the video of the process and things that I, I did. So this will be a long video. This will probably go on YouTube first and then I'll sprinkle it out on TikTok or whatever. But I'm saying all of that to first say, there is nothing wrong with locks. Let me, because I'm not one of them people that's going to come on here and be like, oh, see the worldly ways that I had to cut off. That No, that is not, <laughs> that's not it. I didn't cut off my locks because I've outmatured them. I didn't cut off my locks because they're, they're sinful in some way. I didn't cut off my locks to show growth. I, whatever people come on here and like, oh, I'm so mature now. Let me cut off my hair. No. I didn't cut off my locks to fit into the status quo or nobody's whatever. No, none of it. Nada. None. If it was my decision, I'd be flowing and luscious as usual. <laughs> but obedience is one thing that I'm going to be a thousand percent doubling down off. If God says it, I don't care who else says something else. What else is going on? Obey. There's a the scripture that a lot of people like to use is obedience is better than sacrifice. And I have put the question forth. That's great. But what happens when obedience requires sacrifice? It, and, and it's not really obedience if you're cool with it, if it's something you want to do. It's really only submitted obedience when you don't want to do it. Like I don't have to obey God to eat food like, oh, yeah, but I have to obey him to fast. Right. Because I want to eat at no point. Are you like, you know what? My body is saying we don't want no more food. <laughs> it's just good. And then God say, my daughter, my son, eat food. <laughs> no, but you'll be smashing all the snacks, all the cakes and the candies. And God will say, my daughter, my son, fast. That's obedience. Right. I don't have to. I don't, I'm not obeying God to eat food and drink water. It's it's a principle, but I'm not having to be submitted to God to do the, the normal, right? It's when it's against what you feel. It goes, you maybe you don't understand and you, you really don't want to do it. It's uncomfortable. It's painful because all of this is uncomfortable. When I tell y'all, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. <laughs> because I've, and I've never, ever cut my hair. I've never had short hair. Not a day in my life. I was born with a head full of hair. So <laughs> I probably had this much hair at birth. Like I probably had, came out with this much hair, if not more. So this is extremely sacrificial. This is not a knock on locks. So if that's what you're thinking, like, oh, see, K. Rich came up and she matured past her locks and blah, 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 blah. If anybody's telling you that, they lying. I want them back. And as soon as the green light <laughs> from the Lord says, you can do it again if he comes with it, I block it at that day. I started by locks myself. I will restart them myself. But I'm saying all of that to say, in this season, there are some tough things that you're going to have to obey and some tough things you're going to have to submit to. There are some things in pruning that we don't want to get rid of. There are some things in development and in God Growing us in a certain type of way in a specific season, right? 
And this is one of those seasons for me. This is one of those seasons and it's like, God, I don't even understand. I was so waiting for it to have the scissor. And then Kayla, God say, Kayla, Kayla, stay thy hand. Like, like Abram and Isaac. Like I, I just was waiting for that, right? For the just, I just wanted to know you'd do whatever. No, no. I had to come out. It took me three weeks and still, I cried, cry. I cried when I cut it. I, I cried when I combed them out. I cried when I styled it. I cried when I went out the house for the first time without. I cried. I cried. The cry I crude. Do you hear me? <laughs> so be prepared and be in a place where whatever God requires, let's make sure our hearts are postured in a place where whatever God requires, man, we on. Because it's something there. There's a benefit there. I remember I was speaking negatively about cutting my hair. I was speaking negatively and I had to talk with one of my good, good friends. Love you, sis. And as soon as, and she was telling me, come on, Kay, like you got to think different. You got to think about it different. When I left, I got in my truck and I'm, I'm headed back home. And God was like, you heard what she said. Like change the way you're talking about this. This is not a punishment. This is not a, a condemnation. This is really a gift. Yes, you're having to feel the pains of sacrifice to get to the, the goal and the end of it. But this, I, I'm giving you a gift in this and you just can't see it yet. And a lot of times when we go through things, they're really a gift in it. There's a, there's a benefit in it. There's a, a, a going up in it that we can't see because all we are fixated on at the moment is the feeling, the pain, the uncomfortability, the frustration. And I was like, oh my goodness, I repented. I cried like, God, I trust you. I, under, I, I may not understand, but I understand what you're saying to me now. And I'll submit to that. And it's just like right after that, I did the video about the difference between obeying and being submitted. And, and this season is a season where we must be submitted. That whatever it is, that not, not my will, but thy will be done. I was at the, if it be thy will, take this, let this cup pass and drank it. God was busting my head. When I read that passage of scripture and it was like, you can either be like Christ Take that cup, endure that for the greater elevation, or you can be like Peter in the story and chump out. Peter was bad in the beginning when he cut, yeah, cut old buddy's ear off. He was, he was ready. Oh, Christ, we finna rock. Peter was one of the zealous ones. He, Peter was ready until Peter saw <laughs> them beating Christ up at, at, the, at the, the high priest uh, house. Beating him up, spitting on him. Man, Peter was like, I, I don't even too much know because he stopped me from fighting back. So when he got to a place where he didn't know how to navigate and it was uncomfortable, uncomfortable for him and he didn't know how to function in a, a meek and suffering role, he jumped out. So God was like, you going to be like Christ and drink that cup and, and ride and be strong or are you going to jump out like Peter? I'm like... I'm a ride. I'm a ride, oh king. Right? So, while you're going through this process, man, stand. Having done all but stand, stand. Stand solid. Everybody talking about, I'm standing on business. I'm standing on, I'm standing on kingdom. Business come and go, but the kingdom lasts forever. Stand on kingdom. Stand on the standards and stand on the principles and, and the, the, the foundation of faith that you have in the most high. Through Christ Jesus, right? I just want to encourage y'all with this. This was a painful, <laughs> it was a painful process. And it still is because like I'm still, I have some hair guru friends, right? So I'm still trying to find products, still trying to find like how to layer it and get the, like I'm still going to trim some stuff going to the back. Like I'm still, it's it, it's not like I cut it and then it was like, voila, everything's perfect. Like no. So even in that, there are days I get up and I'm like frustrated trying to do it. I cried going to church, <laughs> trying to get ready for church. Like, so it's a process, but I'm finding the things in it that God wants me to see. I'm finding and seeing, okay, God, I see, I see what you're doing. I see why you did that. 
Now let me embrace this or what's coming to the top? What is is this is there insecurities here? Is there low self-esteem here? Is there rejection spirit here? Is there pride there? Is there what is it so that we can we can scoop that thing all out of there? But it's a gift. It's not a punishment. So I want y'all to know that when you're in that state of going through, when you're in the pruning state, it's not a punishment. You might feel a little tight. It might feel a little painful, but it's not. It's not a punishment. Pruning is not something sent to completely destroy you. Pruning is something sent to cut away that which is not beneficial, that which is not needed so that you can increase so that you can grow even the more. So I hope y'all will be encouraged by this video. And yes, y'all will see the, the new cut out here in the streets. If you see me, you know, and if you got locks, don't come around me because I'm still I'm still bruised. If you got locks, just just don't don't don't. I love you, but I can't. I can't because I'm still all right. I'm still digesting it, but <laughs> I love y'all. I hope this encourages you and I'm putting some videos of the process in there all the way to the end. And even enemy was like, keep the locks because when you're done, you can. I don't think God was like, no. So I had to dispose of them. <laughs> so hope this bless you. I hope you're encouraged and y'all can see a little bit of glimpse into my real life. Right. All right. Y'all. I love y'all. I want y'all to do what I want y'all to do every time I come on here. That is go be great. Shalom. Turning it, turning it over. Ooh, something new, whatever God has. But this way, I can turn it on. Get it on. Y'all, yeah, right now I look like Third Good Marshall's granddaughter. Oh my God. But it's always good to have friend support. She do not look like Third Good Marshall's granddaughter. I look like I'm about to give a speech on civil rights, but it's okay. Wait, is it recording? Uh, Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I should have walked like somebody with a push on.